All right, next we're going to evaluate Family Tree Maker, the 2019 version. Now, once again, I'm running this in parallels on a Mac, but I am running the Windows PC version. So um, what we're evaluating is the, is the Windows version. And the reason I'm running it on my Mac is that the fan on my Windows laptop was just a little bit too loud for the audio. So, um, but this should be exactly how it looks running on a Windows machine. Actually, it may even look a little bit better running on a Windows machine. One of the things that Family Tree Maker did that the other programs haven't done uh, that I've looked at so far is Family Tree Maker, as part of the install, had me create a default database. And once I did that, this is the screen it brought me to. Uh, so I'm going to click here, and it wants a name. Uh, I'm going to expand that so I can see these name parts. And uh, as always, my great great grandfather, my great grandfather is Frank Verling Thompson, and no suffix. Okay. Uh, on this screen, I can indicate that he was a male. I can offer his birth date, 14th of June, 1891. I'm not going to worry about place. Uh, I hit continue. But it is taking its time. Uh, so it's offering me to search uh, Ancestry automatically. It also has an interface with Family Search. Uh, I don't care about that right now. There we go. And now that I've added my first person, I see a nice pedigree chart. So I want to uh, add the death date of. Uh, Frank Verling, and it looks like I can do that over here on the side. So he died the 9th of October 1967. All right, and I've entered my first person. See here that it has normalized the dates like the other programs did. And let's move on to his father. So his father was, uh, it says add the name of the person as if you were reading. Okay, so I'm going to do Charles. H. Thompson. Let's see what it does it since I didn't pull up the little pencil. And see over here on the right hand side of the screen, it's added Charles. And if I add his birthday here, let's uh, do it differently. Uh, for let's use the American format and see how it uh, handles the normalization of dates and you see here it converted the date to uh, a normalized value. Normalized by the way just means that it's going to always display the dates consistently no matter how I input them. Charles died, oh, I did this again, uh, he died 10th of April 1898. He was born in 1851. And let me add Frank's mother. And she was Sarah Jane Raymond. See down here, I've got uh, Charles H. Thompson and Sarah Jane Raymond with the child of uh, Frank, being Frank Fairling. It looks like what Family Tree Maker is doing here is it's displaying the pedigree at the chart and a, a simplified uh, f um, family group page at the bottom with the editing field on the right hand side. Uh, I think if I click this, oh, person, nope, that's for media. Uh, let me stick to my original task here. So Sarah Jane was born in January of 1850. Tap, tap, tap. Oops, tap too far. And she died. 10th of December 1912. Now, what about their marriage? Uh, okay, so marriage to Charles H. Thompson, uh, right here at the bottom. So I'm going to enter a date from there, 18 September 1889. And we have two generations. So, on we go. Charles H. Thompson's father was Daniel 
Hart Thompson. I'm actually really pleased with the performance of these applications running within Parallels on a Mac because sometimes my uh, Windows running on the Mac just doesn't work real well, but this is working well. Uh, his spouse with at was Abigail B. Coates, and she was born in 1829, and she died 9th of November. 1856. I wonder how much losing his mother when he was only four years old impacted Charles H. Thompson. Sigh. Okay, uh, I can add the marriage date right here. 10th of October 1846. There we have it. I've got a pedigree chart uh, of three generations of Thompsons in Family Tree Maker 2019, the Windows version. And I have a nice family group sheet at the bottom and my edit screen on the right.